Good day traders and welcome to the premium video newsletter for Wednesday, September 25th. It seems like the year just started, but we're only days away from October and the winter holidays are almost here. Lots to discuss today as we had several reports released earlier, so let's begin with the fundamentals and work our way into the technicals as we usually do from there. According to the Commerce Department, Americans increased purchases of new homes in August after cutting back in July, suggesting that higher mortgage rates may not be slowing the housing recovery. The report claimed that sales of new homes increased 7.9%. That comes after sales plunged 14.1% in July. Mortgage applications in the week ending September 20th increased 5.5% which compares to an 11.2 advance the previous week. Another report that was released today was the August Durable Goods Orders, which increased 0.1% when a 0.2% decline had been expected. And remember what I always say, it's not the actual release number that counts. It's the expectations compared to the released number. Futures are currently caught between the bearish influence of the federal budget uncertainties and the bullish influence of the apparent unlimited quantitative easing program. Let's take a look at the technicals of the broad market and see how the various subsectors are doing today. What we're seeing in the S&P 500 is further selling pressure. We're getting closer to the 50-day moving average on the downside and now we're less than 20 points away. This is going to be on top of every fund manager's list over the next few days. When fund managers see markets approaching the 50-day average, they slow down the buying and wait for an up move. Be ready to see the 1680 level or maybe just a bit higher within the next day or two. To see if subsectors are confirming the move we're seeing in the broad market, the first subsector I will look at is the transports. As you can see, this subsector also broke down today and is once again headed lower to the 50-day average. The next support area for the transports is the 116 level. And remember, this is a tradable ETF. Before I move on to the tech sector, I do want to mention that both the retail sector and the financial sector have a bit of strength today. So not everything is totally bleak for the broad market. However, the transports are my leading indicator for the broad market. And right now they're telling me we have more selling pressure on the way. Remember, we're only $2 away from the 50-day average. And funds are looking at this number right now carefully. So keep your eye on the transports at least during the next few days. The next market I want to look at is the NASDAQ 100. This index and the semiconductor sector is where the strength has been coming from during the last several weeks. And this is why the broad market rallied so hard last week. But the strength is softening up. The RSI is coming off over bot levels. And the divergence is still there. Traders who accumulated long positions are getting nervous. And if we sell off just a bit more, we're going to test the 50-day average on this index just as well. If that happens, what will provide strength to the broad market then? This is the question, and this is why I'm getting a bit paranoid about the upside to the stock market at this time. My explanation may be a bit long-winded, but I want you to understand my logic and why I make the decisions that I do. If the NASDAQ keeps getting weaker, it will push the broad market under the 50-day moving average. And this is why I'm watching this index, which is concentrated on the top 100 tech stocks in the world. Watch the upper 7675 level and see if we can resist getting there during the next few sessions. Meanwhile, just as I said last few days, the stock market is weaker and opening higher and closing lower for the last few days. This confirms my suspicion that the market is weaker. The US dollar is also lower today, being adversely affected by the possibility of a government shutdown. On a technical level, we did experience four up days, which is significant. I'm looking at the RSI and I'm not seeing us go much lower than what we're currently at. We are testing the low we made and I don't think we will break it. Or conversely, if we do break it, it's possible because there's a lot of stops there 
I still don't think we'll go much lower than the low we made after the FOMC, which is just a bit above the 80 level. The market may bounce around these levels for a while, which is reasonable, but ultimately, I think the dollar will go a bit higher, at least during the next week or two. The feds are keeping the stimuli, and the rule of thumb is simple. Till the stimuli goes away, it's going to be hard to get the dollar much higher. But nonetheless, we're still very oversold technically. Don't get me wrong, I'm still short the dollar, but I think we need a bit more of a bump to the upside before turning back down. Look for a rise to the 81 level short term, and then we may come back down. Realistically, the U.S. cannot continue putting unlimited amounts of money into the stock and bond market. And the minute we know the end is near, the dollar is going to rally really hard. And this is one of the reasons why the feds are so mysterious and so unclear about when they're going to end the stimuli because they know what I'm saying is true, that fund managers are going to be all over the dollar as soon as they know for sure that the stimuli is going to be over. The euro currency is higher after a report showed German consumer confidence increase to the highest level in six years in September. What we're seeing in the euro is a classic bullish flag pattern to the upside. The euro is going to continue moving up till we get some certainty out of the U.S. government. But for the next few days, I think the euro will take lead from the dollar and will continue to drift within the top of the flag channel. The longer we can stay inside the flag pattern, the better the breakout will be and the less risk we will have on the trade. Let's watch this market carefully over the next few days for signs of a strong move. One clue will be the U.S. dollar and if we continue falling. I think it will, but not in the next few days. So let's watch the U.S. dollar and the euro carefully because they're trading off of each other right now very strongly. One market we haven't discussed in some time is the Australian dollar. Recently, we saw a good rally move from the 88.50 level almost all the way up to the 9500 level. While the Aussie may have more to go, I'm not ruling it out for the time being. We are due for a slight pullback. The first point of support is at the 9200 level, and then if we continue moving lower, and we may because the rise up had a fairly strong momentum, and that usually leads to a healthy pullback. There's not much support below the 9200 level. So if we breach that level, we may really come down a lot more. I will watch this market over the next few days and will offer you some directional guidance so that we don't get stuck in a long position headed all the way down to the 88 level. That would not be good. The markets are recovering from the FOMC and are finally seeing some setups for tomorrow. If you recall, I mentioned that after wild moves like the kind we saw, at the FOMC, it's, it's going to be very hard to get good setups. But now we've had some time pass by and now setups are coming up again. The first setup is a 4x4 to the upside. The ticker symbol is VIPS and you should go long 15 cents above today's high. And if filled, place a sell stop 20 cents below today's low. The second setup is a short 4x4 and the ticker symbol is EUO. Place a sell stop 10 cents below today's low. And if filled, place a buy stop 15 cents above today's high. That's it for today's tutorial. Tomorrow, once again, we should see some volatility in the morning, so be careful out there. I will update you midday as usual. Have a great night, everyone.